Okie dokie, now this is the, the official bit. So first of all, thanks for being here. Uh, second of all, I'm Tommy, uh, organizing this. I'm a musician myself. I, I know half of the people here, which is very cool to have new faces. That's really nice. I'm looking forward to your perspective and the conversation. Today we are very pr privileged to have Nate, who is the first musician to ever talk at Dr. Music Talks. So far we had only experts, people that were <laughs> usually <laughs> outside the music industry, not incredible musicians, practitioners that put things in action and blah, 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 like Nate. So he's an expert in practice. He's getting things done in a very nice way. I've seen his progress over the last year and I think now you have 70,000 followers on Twitter or something. And he's engaging like everyone in the conversation. So we're going to learn a lot about what he does in practice, what works, what doesn't. This thing is not a panel. It's not a talk. It's not a lecture. It's a discussion with Nate. So whoever wants to say something, we don't need to wait for the end or something. Just raise a hand and let's start a conversation. Let's engage, you know, in a conversation that everybody will learn something out of it. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoy. Looking forward to your feedback later. And uh, let's, get, let's get started. Let's give it a hand for all. Fame is but a fruit tree, so very unsound It can never flourish until its stalk is in the ground Do any of you know who wrote that? And do you know what it means? Anyone? None of you are Nick... Well, yeah. Nick Drake, absolutely. That was Nick Drake, and he was a singer-songwriter in the 60s and 70s. And I am very inspired by that line because what it means to me is that if your goal is to be famous and that, that's what you're trying to build everything on, you want to become a success based on just like, I want a lot of people to know about me and make loads of money, um, you're going to end up without your roots really planted and you're going to end yourself in trouble, I think. And it's one of the reasons I'm so excited about what we have happening now as musicpreneurs, as Tommy has coined, um, because we get to take the power back and to be passionate and real about what we do as artists and promoters and managers and everything. And, and, I, and I think that we're in a very exciting time for all of us. So before we kind of get on to what it is I want to talk to you about today, I, who the fuck is Nate Mangard, basically? So the first talk I ever came to was by Ian Titchener. Was it you, some of you were at that one? That man swore more than I have ever heard anyone swear in any period of time. So I thought I had to put something that was at least mild. I was hoping he was going to be here, but he's, he's busy elsewhere. But, um, so who am I? Um, and because I wanted this to be fun, first of all, I'm a sexy mofo, above and beyond anything else that I'm going to tell you about today. And this, the reason I put this in is because have fun is like one of the first things that I think should be taught in life, is enjoy whatever it is that you do, no matter how hard it is at the time that you're doing it. Um, what, it, what, it what I call myself, I'm from South Africa, I'm a South African modern folk troubadour. And there's another reason, the, re the reason I call myself that is because if I say singer-songwriter, it gives you no sense at all about any kind of mystery or interest or story that you might be interested in hearing more about. And when, you, when people hear modern folk troubadour, they're like, what does that mean? They want to know. It, it's an instant engagement, an instant, and it's also accurate, which is very important. So, uh-oh, can I, should I, should I? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Okay, I won't worry about you. So this is my first ever, um, what, is, what is this, PowerPoint presentation. This was a scary, the reason I'm mainly really nervous right now is because I'm worried this whole thing's gonna suddenly start running off by itself um, and doing strange things. So those are kind of some of the, the sort of creative aspects of me being a sexy mofo and a modern troubadour. And then to the more practical sides of things, which is potentially why I've been asked to speak here today, I have 70,000 followers on Twitter, I have 3,000 likes on Facebook, 1,400 subscribers on my mailing list, and what is most important to me, or at least what becomes the most important, is that I have, at the time that I wrote, the 61 patrons. And those are people who pledge money every single month so that I just keep making art. That is what they want from me, and that is what I give to them. And that is the most empowering thing that I've ever experienced in my life. And I'm going to tell you more about that. Um, but first, I want to again talk about something which is inspiration and is slightly romantic because I am a romantic. And I'm in love with the Dalai Lama. I coming out now and I'm saying it. No, he is a huge inspiration to me. And this statement by him, the planet does not need more successful people. 
The planet desperately needs more peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers, and lovers of all kinds. I live my life by this statement. It's one of the statements I kind of come back to regularly because as creative people, what we do is of intrinsic value to humanity. It has value purely because it exists and we've been sold on this idea that we have to have product, that there has to be, we have to have the CD that we sell so that we can make money. And what I'm seeing with Patreon, with pa having patrons is that what people really connect with is a story and they connect with um, a feeling and an emotion and that's what they want to be a part of and that can be what they want to support without having to do too much else. And I think that if we can, those of us here who choose to take and empower ourselves can become those peacemakers, healers, restorers, storytellers and lovers, we not only become successes, we also inspire and, and change the world through our art and through what it, how we present ourselves to the world. And I think that's something I really want to make clear right at the beginning because I'm going to talk about a lot of like numbers and money stuff and, 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 I, and for me this is really where it all starts. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is, is I had a lot of stuff I wanted to say and I was looking at the list that Tommy put up on the thing and I was like there's no way that I can cover all of this for you today in, in any way that's going to be practical because I really want to hear from you more than I, I want to speak. I want to hear what you want to hear from me about, about what I know. So what I know and what I want to speak with you about today is, is growing my tribe and about what that looks like for me is, is a funnel. And the funnel is basically where people go from not knowing who I am, they've never heard of Nate Mangard, to in my personal funnel to becoming my patrons and pledging a certain amount of money every month to support what I do as an artist. And as you saw, like there were 70,000 tw Twitter followers, but 61 patrons. So there's a huge difference there. But those 61 patrons are currently my best source of income in the world. And, and, and it's growing every month. I, there were 12 new patrons last month. I've been running it for four months. So, so it's growing slowly, but it is, for me, a really key part of what it is that I want to do. So how do I gather my tribe? This is kind of what I wanted to tell you today. And, um, uh, one of my mentors, I wrote to him this morning in a mild panic thinking, how am I going to describe this to people? And he said, think of an interesting story. Think of how, you know, just think of how it might look. And I thought of uh, a relationship or how you meet someone. You walk into a bar, you walk onto the tube, and you meet someone, and there's a connection. But if you walk up to that person and you say, hi, you're amazing, will you marry me? You aren't going to get very far. <laughs> and that's kind of what we're talking about as artists connecting with our tribes, is that if you walk up to a stranger and you say, and I see people doing this on the streets in Camden all the time, they walk up and they go, hi, I'm a hip hop artist, buy my CD. It's like, what? Do you even know that I like hip hop music? How do you have any sense that this is something that I'm going to be interested in? And so. The first stage, I basically thought of these, how a relationship works. You meet someone, you woo them, um, then you exchange kisses and energy and time and love making, whatever, and then you commit. You enter into a relationship, you get married, you, the next kind of the real relationship begins. And so I looked up definitions for each of those and I just thought they were so apt for what it is I want to tell you about today. So you, to, to meet someone for us is to arrange or happen to come into the presence or company of our tribe, the people who we want to meet, who are going to support us as artists in the world. That's the definition of meeting. How do you meet those people? Where do you find them? How do you make that first connection? Where does that happen? What bar? What <laughs> online site? Like where, that, that's an important first point. And then woo, once they're connected, they know that you exist. They've heard your name. They've maybe heard a song or two. Then you begin to share with them and you tell them who you are and what you do, your music, your writing, your creations, whatever it is you do as a creative person, you woo them with yourself, with your creativity, and they fall in love, and you fall in love with them because they become your supporters, and they love you as much as you love them. And then there's an exchange, and the exchange in our case is merchandise, is CDs, is them coming to our shows, is them paying to, to be a part of our world, is offering an exchange of value, the act of giving one thing and receiving another in return. And then finally, there is the commitment to be in a long-term emotional relationship, because what we really are talking about here is emotions. And if anybody tells you anything else, I would disagree with them vehemently because what I've experienced so far as an independent artist is that the more emotionally I connect with authenticity with my community, the more feedback I get both financially and just in terms of them supporting my music on a, on a larger scale. So is this making sense to everyone so far? Is it kind of... So I'm going to go through each of these now singly and if you want to ask me any questions um, now, which d don't, like, because I'm going to go through them, so is there anything anyone wants to ask that doesn't relate to each one of those in individually right now? About me or anything? No? Okay, cool. So, right. So, I want to ask 
for your opinion about this first because I really do want you guys to think a little before I just give you my answers. And that's an important point. Everything I'm telling you today is what works, what is currently working for me. And I have done trial and error for several years. I have made some big, big mistakes. I have thrown money at things. I have ended up on the road with almost no tank in my gas, gas in my tank. <laughs> Nice. And um, yeah, so I've, I've made a lot of mistakes to get to what works for me now. And I, I'm going to really invite you to, to just, I want this to inspire you and maybe give you some, some idea of some tools you could use. But I want you to work this out for yourself. And so tell me, where do you think that you could meet people? And this is both I'm real, you know, in person and online. Just shout out some stuff. Like, do you have, guys have got it. Where do you, Twitter, there we go. Amazing. Facebook, amazing. Open mic nights, gigs, SoundCloud. There we go. Cool. So we're already getting an idea. We have these tools. They exist. These platforms. These real life places. We can go to the. We can go to open mics. We can play gigs. We can connect with people online. The beauty of online, and I sincerely believe in Twitter <laughs> at this point. The beauty of online is we can scale. So as me, just a single individual, I can scale up to almost infinite size. I can be my own manager. There's going to come a point where I'm going to need to hire other people. But right now, I'm managing all of this myself. And I can do that because of these platforms, because of these tools. And I, so I'll tell you the story of what happened with me and Twitter is that I had a, a really amazing fan named Ben Landis. And he's been supporting my music now for about three or four years since I was living in South Africa. I don't know how he, nice. <laughs> Time for a break. Um, I don't know how he found me first. I think it was on Twitter. Um, but for whatever reason, he fell in love with my music and he began supporting me. And he was one of those people who would reply to every mailing list newsletter I sent out. He'd have feedback on, I love what you did with that song there. I, I hope that you do well at this. And I'm looking forward to that. And he was so engaged. He eventually helped me to crowdfund my, my most recent EP. He was one of the, the pledges for that. And so I became interested in him because he was so interactive. And I, and I asked him, what do you do? Send me some links. I checked out his Twitter. He had over a million followers on Twitter. I then wrote to him and said, what have you done on Twitter? Tell me now. And he runs a service, which is basically where he works with clients, with people like us. And you pay him, I think at the moment, it's 99 US dollars a month. And he connects me with people who are going to be interested in what I'm doing. So for example, when I first signed up with him, he asked me, who are five artists who, if people like them, they're going to probably like you? So I was like, Passenger, Ben Howard, Jack Johnson, Jason Mraz. You get what I'm, what I'm saying there. And what he then does is he sets up on this website where it automatically follows people who follow those artists and who themselves have quite low f follower counts. And by doing that, it just it, it's the first, it's the meat, basically, because they suddenly see Nate Mangard followed me. Who the hell is Nate Mangard? And why is he following me? And then they go and they look at my profile and they see, I'm a modern troubadour. I play this kind of music. I believe in magical hugs, which I do. So, and then they go to my website. And then I start getting messages from people all over the world saying, I can't believe I've never heard of you before. Your music is incredible. I'm so glad you followed me. Thank you so much. And we begin a conversation. And suddenly, we are onto the wooing phase. We've gone from meet to woo. So, I spoke with Ben. I told him I was doing this talk. I asked him if I could give out his email. He said yes. Um, so it's just blandis at gmail.com. And he said, if you sign up with more than one of you, so if you guys like afterwards chat with each other, if you want to sign up, he'll give you 50% off the first month, um, which will at least give you time to get a sense on if this is something you want to use and if it works for you. And tell him Nate Mangard sent you, obviously. He's a wonderful, wonderful human being. And I'm honored that, that he's a part of my world and has helped me so much. Um, and yeah, literally, like he's got clients, multi-Grammy winners, Emmy winner. I mean, he's done crazy stuff for some artists, like really, really crazy. And um, yeah, that's it. So, so that's right. So we've had the Twitter. I've met someone's been followed by me. They're excited. Do you have any questions about this, by the way, before I move on? <laughs> you can do that afterwards. <laughs> any, anything at all? No? OK, cool. So then this person has been followed by me. They've listened to my music. They've gone. Who are you? Some people say that. They're like, do I know you is often the first question. And I'm so excited when someone asks that question. It's much better than the people who just follow me back without engaging. The engagement is, the, is such a key part. And, and I think that it's a mistake that a lot of um, labels and, and bigger companies are still making is they judge numbers rather than engagement. 
And what I'm learning more and more is that if you have, I would rather work with someone who's got 1,000 Facebook likes but really high engagement than someone who's got 10 or 20,000 but they're getting one or two likes and no comments on their posts. Because to me, if you're having a sincere relationship with your fans, then I know that you're doing the right thing. And, and so, so, right, this person gets followed by me. They get an automatic message. Auto DM, which is a very emotional subject for a lot of people because auto DM, I don't know if you, if you know Twitter, it's when you automatically send them a message as they follow you. And the usual thing is like, hey, thanks for following. Please buy my music. Please check out my link. Please check out this stuff. And they just instant promotion advertising. That is literally committing suicide if you want to have a good relationship with any person in this world. It's like asking for sex when you just meet someone at the bar. It's that kind of thing. Um, so what I do is I do send an auto DM, but it just says, hey, thank you so much for connecting. Um, I really appreciate this, and I'd love to hear what you think about my music, and I will reply to you as soon as, as, soon as I hear from you. And what that does is it, and when people ask me, is that an auto message? I say, yes, it's automatic, but I wanted to have a conversation with you. So I, had to, I get a lot of followers. I had to find a way to connect. And, so I'm trying to find all these ways to get that engagement started. Let me know if I'm going too fast, because I'm like excited, and I get excited, and then I talk fast. So is it okay? am I going at a nice case speed for everybody? Yeah? OK, cool. So, so back to I followed someone. They've, see, they've listened to a song. They've, gone, they've written to me, gone, you're awesome. I love what you do. Why did I never hear of you? Then we begin a conversation. And for me, what I've begun to do only recently is that I add them to a list on Twitter that is friendly tweeters. And it's a way for me to keep track of those people who have taken the time to engage with me, to say, hey, I like your music. Hey, that was a cool thing you did, or whatever. And then I can stay in touch with them, because we're building a relationship. And, and it's an authentic relationship. And I know I'm not really talking about music here much, but the truth is, what people are buying into when they're buying your music is they're buying the experience and the feeling that it gives them. And, and I, can, I didn't actually put any up here, but I thought about it. I've been getting messages, particularly over the last week or two, from people saying that my music has literally changed their lives, like literally taken them from a place of like total darkness and depression to feeling like they can handle stuff. So that's like, that's the, those are people I met through Twitter. So this is an authentic way to begin and develop relationships with real human beings who can support you as an artist. Um, so, right, so the wooing phase <laughs> is, is all the ways, is another word for it, or not another word, but the way that we have these conversations online is content. So what, again, so we had already, we had SoundCloud, and we had Twitter is kind of a way to share content more than create content. But it is also a really good way to have simple, easy conversations of like, this is me in bed this morning. I don't want to get out of bed. You know, stuff like that. Give people insights into who you are and what you're up to in your world. Um, so I put up a bunch of these. And what I've noticed happened, what happened to me, the mistake I made a while ago, which is great, and I'm so glad I made it, is I tried to use all of these. <laughs> and I nearly had a freaking heart attack, because that shit is crazy. <laughs> like, so the key is, is really to, to find your strengths. You, you have, all of us here have strengths, different strengths and weaknesses, and it's finding what works for you. Some of you may be more visually oriented. Instagram could be a really good option for you. Some of you may be into, you love talking to other people, having conversations. Maybe do a podcast on SoundCloud. There are infinite options and you need to work them out for yourself. For me, what, what I'm currently slowly growing is YouTube. I love YouTube. I'm, I'm, I don't have many followers on it yet. I've got less than a thousand because I only recently started really like going, this is cool. I can just talk directly to people through, through YouTube. Amazing. Um, I love Instagram. SoundCloud, I put all my like sort of rough demos up on. Twitter, obviously, is like my kind of center zone for that kind of stuff. There's one thing I did forget to put onto this, which is kind of important, is that have a website. If you don't yet have your .com or your dot whatever it is you want to call it, um, that is kind of like your train station. And all of these are the, tra are the different lines that the trains travel along. But they need to end up at that station that is your website, because that's where you control the content. It's your content, and you have the say in what happens to it. Um, but these are the ways that you woo them. So as an example, WordPress, I blog quite regularly, talking about what I'm interested in, what I'm up to, what I'm afraid of, what songs I'm writing, what lyrics I'm thinking of, what musicians are inspiring me. All of that is a story that, that you can tell people that is interesting for them. So is that all making sense to you guys, like in terms of um, any, any questions about this at this point? Oh, wait, I've got the actual uh, the wooing part around what. Oh, yeah, right, so share free stuff. Um, so to woo is to seek the favor, support, or custom of your tribe. Um, and sharing free stuff. This is, again, one of the really key pieces. Grow your mailing list, because Twitter might shut down. Facebook wants to charge you every time someone sees one of your posts. They, they're, those platforms, their main interest is to make money, which is fine. But if you control your list and you 
can offer an exchange that's like your songs or your creations and just a few of them in exchange for emails, then you're, you're having direct access to people. Again, it's the, the closest you can get in terms of the online relationship. Um, I thought that until I started doing online shows, but that's a whole, that's, yeah, so I've got this. So likes for songs on Facebook, you can install stuff that allows people, if they like your page, they can download a song if you want to do that kind of thing. I'm, I'm more focused on getting emails right now. Like, my land, if you land on my front page on my site, it's got my new official music video, and it's got sign up for free downloads. That is it. It's got then enter site underneath. All I want people to do is either watch that video, or sign up, or go into my website. If you have too many options, people don't know what to choose. So if, yeah, if you're wanting them to sign up, go for that. Online shows for me have been amazing, amazing to do. I didn't think that there would be as much fun as they are to literally stand in front of my computer with my guitar and just sing to a bunch of people who are all over the world. Not even that many. It's usually between 20 and 40 people, but that's still not a bad crowd as, as things go when they're really loving it. And they feel like you are sitting in their living room with them. There's a real kind of connection. A lot of my patrons, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so online shows. So, there's, so you're basically using your webcam, and if you want, you can use a little setup, and you asked earlier, Nate, and so basically what I was using for a while was a mixer, and I bought the, the, a cheap condenser mic, and I was plugging in and, and doing like a live sound setup in my room and playing through that. You can do it straight into your computer. With a MacBook, it's the quality of the speaker is good enough. I did that initially, but I got fussy, and I wanted like way better sound, and so I did that for a bit, and um, now I'm going traveling, so I've sold all those things, but I'm, I'm buying some smaller kind of equipment that I can keep doing it with. Um, so an online show is basically just s using one of these platforms. So there's Hangouts on Air, which is the, the, Google, the, the Google thing, the Numubu. Um, and you literally just set up an event, click go live, and tell people it's happening, share the link, and they join, and they come into the chat room, and they see you on video, you don't see them. And, and they watch you perform, and you speak with them, and they're in a chat room talking about it. What people start to do once they know the lyrics is they start to actually like type the lyrics along with it, and, and they do the clap, clap, clap. They actually type clap, clap, clap after songs, <laughs> which is amazing. And, and what's amazing is that there's a real emotional feedback from it. Like, I had a really beautiful time. My two top patrons came to me through Twitter and then online shows and then signed up as like, one of them's on $100 a month, the other one's on 50 Those are two of my top patrons. That's a, to me, that's like, I, did, I set up those just, I was like, I'll set up those, those levels just in case, because you never know. And people are taking them. And, and that's the thing, because what they're valuing is something beyond just, I'll give you a CD and you give me this. They give me what they value my art at. That's it. They decide that, and I'm OK with that. And that's incredible. So make awesome content. As I said, blog posts, videos, SoundCloud, photos. Share other people's stuff. That's a really nice way to help to spread the word. Share your friend's stuff. Be a part of a community. Be, be friendly. Be kind. And, and it's not all about you. It really isn't. It's about us doing it together. And, and I sincerely believe that. And I would like you to walk away with that at least. <laughs> and communicate. So this is the part where they're getting you posting all this cool stuff. And they're commenting. They're liking. They're sharing. What do you do with that? You talk to them. You thank them for it. Be grateful because these are the people who will build the foundation of the house called your life <laughs> as an artist. And um, so be available, respond, speak with heart, be real, align yourself with your brand. And I use the word brand there because it's a nice way to just describe what it is that you're doing. It's your business, your, your, who you are. And for some of you, you might be more performers. I'm all about like just being real and telling people my story. So I just talk like I talk to you, to everyone. Um, but some people have like a show and an act. And if, if you have that persona, speak in that persona, but do speak to people. Be connected with them. They want that and it really, it makes, and yeah, the final piece in that is beware of over-promoting. One of my least favorite things at this point to see on people's Facebook pages is like four or five posts in a row where it's like, my new CD's out, buy it. I've got stuff on YouTube, listen to it. I've got, just please, please God, help somebody listen. It just, it's, it, it, it's, I understand the feeling because I used to do that. I used to feel like, I just, but I, they need to listen. I've got this stuff and it's awesome and I want them to hear it and this is how I'm going to tell them about it. But if you do that, people have got so much information coming in. They want to be a part of a story. We all want to be a part of a story. And so that's the wooing phase. And then we get, any questions? Sorry, before I go on. Um, I've got a question, but it's something that I realized that as you were explaining the wooing phase, it seems that this is something that a lot of people do. But something that you do is that you do not shift. Is that you go a long way to engage with people. So I'm going to let you know something that, OK, I mean, I know we made, you know, we're good friends. But when he sent me a postcard, <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm a performer in the car, but he sent me a postcard, and I got it, and obviously, you know, we'll hang out for coffee, and then the next day I receive a postcard. Still, I know Nate, 
Even if he hadn't done it, I would have supported what he does. But when I got the thing in my hands, it was so amazing. He did something that most people don't do. So this is, when we're talking about engagement, Nate probably is, is let's say, the 100% of engagement. He really goes a long way to make people feel nice. And, and what I really like about what you do is at the end of every message on, on Patreon or Facebook or something, you say, I really appreciate your presence. I really appreciate that you're in my life. This is a very powerful message. So don't forget to say that. You go really a long way. To yeah. Yeah, well, this is something I, was, I, I, I think I was going to get to, but I'm glad you brought it up because I may not have. But the, the, um, the thing of rewards when it comes to, I was going to use Patreon, Patreon, which is the website I'll tell you about later, <laughs> as an example. But um, the rewards go both ways. And this is something that really clicked with me just a couple of weeks ago, is that people are signing up at different amounts of money, and they get different rewards based on how much they're offering on a monthly basis. And so, for example, at... Um, I think at the $10 level, when they sign up, they'll get a postcard from me wherever I am in the world. I'll write them a postcard, post it off to them. And what I, when I came up with that idea, I suddenly got this surge of excitement. And I had this insight that if I'm totally psyched and excited and, and honored and humbled to connect with these people, and they're totally excited to be receiving this stuff from me, then we're all getting so much value out of this experience. And it's not up to anyone else to say what that is or isn't worth. It's up to us to decide between us, for them to say, I want to give you this much, and for me to say, well, then I'm going to give you this, and you're amazing, thank you. And so that's a really key. The reward is both ways. The reward is for me and for them. It's not just about them giving me money. I get the opportunity to send them a freaking postcard. That is awesome. Um, yeah, okay, so be aware of over-promoting. Yes. Oh, wait, but Mike, before... Sounds for emails? Which platform do you use? Um, I currently use MailChimp just because uh, I still don't have a massive um, mailing list. I've got 1,500 people. Once I hit the 2,000 mark, I'm going to need to pay for something. But I'm just, it's the whole idea of lean. Start as small as you can, start as cheap as you can. MailChimp is free, they have a really good service. Um, and so I, I have a little sign in form that I've kind of um, I actually purchased a plugin for WordPress that cost me like $35. And I use that on my front page, and it tells me how many people are signing up through that, so I get a sense of what's happening there. And yeah, so MailChimp is what I'm using right now. That's the. So they subscribe to your mailing list, and then you send them the song. Yeah. Oh, you're right. So, so there's an automatic system with MailChimp. Once they click, conf there's a, they get a confirmation email that says you are now signed up, and in that email it says click this link to get your free download. Oh. And so it works that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, MailChimp. Yeah. So. Anything, any other questions? Yes. How often, how often do you send your mail list out and how long do you generally make 